Hey, Coach Justin here from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video, and today we're talking about squashing the bug. Now, if you're a hitter, I guarantee you've heard this term thrown around pretty much throughout your entire baseball career, right? But today, we're gonna get down to the truth about squashing the bug. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it something that you should think about when you're actually hitting or not? That's all in today's video. I really think you're gonna enjoy it. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So let's get down to the truth about squashing the bug. So first of all, why do coaches teach squashing the bug in the first place? Well, a lot of coaches teach it like it's a component of the swing. Just like when you're learning how to hit a baseball, right? They teach you how to load and how to stride. And then, you know, as you're basically turning your body, they, they see that that back foot has movement to it. And so they, they tell you that you need to focus on, okay, imagine there's a bug underneath this back foot and, you know, you need to squash that bug. And their thought process here is actually good, right? Their thought process is, well, if we get hitters to squash that bug, it's going to help them turn their hips. It's going to help them rotate their hips more and get basically all the power that they possibly can into that baseball, right? And so in theory, it makes sense, right? If you watch a professional hitter, you see their back foot definitely moves from the starting position. You don't see their back foot, you know, as they swing, staying in the same spot. They don't swing like a robot, right? Their back foot definitely moves from its initial position. But the question becomes how it actually moves and if you should even focus on squashing the bug in the first place, here's the answer. No, you should get rid of squashing the bug. And to be honest, coaches should stop teaching it as part of a component of the swing because it really isn't, right? It's not what elite hitters do. If you look at any elite hitter, in a slow motion swing, they're not actually consciously focusing on turning that back foot or squashing that back foot. In fact, there's no rotation, there's no turning of that back foot at all. It's really, you know, um, the hips rotating explosively and a weight shift that causes that back foot to move from that initial position, all right? But let's talk a little bit more about that, okay? What actually, why is the reason, if the, if the back foot has movement to it, what causes that movement? What causes that movement is your hips, when you get to, you know, you go into your load and your stride. And when your front foot hits the ground, this is your launch position, all right? And then the rotational part of your swing really starts when your front heel hits the ground, all right? So you load and you stride, your front foot lands slightly open about 45 degrees. And then when that front heel hits the ground, that forces your hips to begin the rotational part of your swing. Now, this is not a step-by-step -step thing, right? Uh, the baseball swing needs to be one fluid motion. I'm just breaking it down in steps, but that's, how, that's the way that it truly works. It's you go into your load and your stride, and when your front heel hits the ground, that forces your hips to begin rotating. And it's the cause of your back foot moving is because your hips are violently rotating. You're exploding with your hips, and you'll notice that you can't explode with your hips without turning that back foot. But here's the deal. I think that a lot of coaches and a lot of players think that squashing the bug, they think of it as an input. It's something that you do. And in reality, that's not the case. It's actually an output. Your back foot moves from it in its initial position. It doesn't squash the bug, but it moves from its initial position because of the rotation of your hips and because of the weight shift. And a great analogy to prove this point to you is imagine that you have a medicine ball, okay? You're holding a medicine ball out in front of you and your instructions are you need to throw that medicine ball as far as you can this direction, okay? So if you just tell a kid that, for example, what's he probably gonna do? He's gonna hold the medicine ball here, right? He can't take any steps. He just has to turn and throw it. He's probably gonna turn back like this to build up some momentum and then he's gonna explode his hips and he's gonna throw it as far as he can that direction, right? Well, what he just did is the exact same thing that we do in the baseball swing. Why did he bring the medicine ball back like this? Because he's loading up his energy. We do the same thing in the swing. We go back, we, we load against our backside, right? We have a weight shift backwards so that we can then build up momentum and then have a weight shift forward in our stride. But with that medicine ball example, if you were trying to get that kid to throw the ball further, would you tell him, all right, Johnny, you need to make sure that you're squashing that bug, that as you're throwing, you're turning 
that back foot like this? Of course not, you wouldn't tell him that. All he needs to do is he needs to explode more. But you'll notice that if you just, I mean, do this at home, pick up a basketball or a medicine ball, try to throw it as far as you can. Don't even think about your footwork at all and you're gonna notice as you violently turn your hips, guess what else turns or moves, I should say, with it? It's this back foot. And look, here's the deal. I understand that teaching younger hitters especially Having a simple verbal cue that you can go to to help them do a particular movement, I understand that that's helpful, but squashing the bug should not be that verbal cue that you use because it's not what elite hitters do. And I see a lot of you know coaches using squashing the bug is almost like it's a stepping stone. I've even heard some people say, well, it's something easy we can teach the young players and then they can learn the correct way to do it later. Like it's a stepping stone and they learn it, but then the problem is they get into the high school ranks, right? And they still have this mindset of squashing the bug because it's hard to, once you make that a habit with thousands and thousands of swings, it's hard to relearn how to do it the right way. And so they get into some bad habits. So squashing the bug is not a stepping stone. It's not what elite hitters do. You know, you don't teach a kid the wrong way to do something. You don't teach him something that when he gets older is totally wrong or it's illegal, but when he's younger, you teach it to him and then you expect him to learn the right way to do it when he gets older. That doesn't make any sense. Let's start out building a good foundation of fundamentals first. And then as they grow and get bigger and stronger, all that good stuff, that's that habit, that good habit that they developed is just gonna help them instead of hindering their progress. So just to recap, there should be no artificial turning of your back foot. Squashing the bug needs to stop being considered an input, something that we do, and our back foot moving from its initial position needs to be considered an output. There's something else that causes that to happen. What is that something else? That something else is, as our hips, it's a weight shift. So we're in our regular stance, right? We go into our load, we shift our weight back, we stride, we shift our weight towards the pitcher, right? And then after we stride, when we start the rotational component of our swing, when our hips are rotating, right? They're rotating violently. You're going to notice that my foot, the pressure, do this at home, the pressure actually starts to shift as I rotate my hips to the inside part of my back foot here. And then the pressure actually goes to my back toe. And as I continue to rotate, you're going to notice my knee actually is moving forward. That's why you see a lot of hitters, it looks like their back foot is actually moving and it looks like they're almost kicking up dirt. They're not doing that by turning their back foot, by squashing their back foot. Their hips are violently rotating and that's causing, if you fully turn your hips, your knee is going to come forward a little bit because what's it attached to? It's attached to this back hip here. So when this hip turns, this back hip is gonna turn as well. And the only way that the back hip turns fully and comes forward is if the knee comes along with it. When the knee comes along, obviously, the toe comes along as well. So that's where you see that toe drag a little bit. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if you did, then I know you're gonna love our free on-demand hitting training. So you need to go grab your copy right now. It's 100% free. This training is gonna help you hit the ball harder, further, and more consistently. You're gonna have more confidence on the field and you're gonna have a lot more fun too. So if that sounds good to you, it's 100% free. All you have to do is just click on the link down there in the comment section. You'll see a pinned comment at the top from Ultimate Baseball Training just hit that link right in there. So go ahead, do that right now. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button for me. I'd really, really appreciate it. And last thing, if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button, okay? We're coming out with new baseball videos every single week designed to get you better. And I don't want you to miss any of them. So subscribe to the channel, join the UBT family. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.